Yeah, بالحقيقة هذا القرار يغير. This decision changes all current equations in the Middle East. The peace process, which was launched in Madrid in 1991, and its complications were all built on international legitimacy and decisions made by the international community and the United Nations. That the land occupied in 1967 should be used for establishing a Palestinian state. And within this land is Jerusalem. With American recognition of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, the U.S. administration would effectively be destroying the basis that the peace process is built on, and it would have disqualified itself as the country fit to sponsor it. It is clear that the party which is running the United States has been touched by a bit of insanity. Trump no longer understands the extent of such decisions or the importance of such decisions. Jerusalem is not a thing to play or joke around with. It is the holiest and most sensitive political and holy place in the world. And the U.S. administration did not take this into consideration when deciding to make such a decision, which will have a very dangerous impact on regional and international levels. There is no longer a peace process. In fact, the region is now open to a new wave of violence. The situation will only get worse. President Erdogan of Turkey has called for an extraordinary summit of all Muslim countries to come together on this specific issue after the U.S. announcement. What more can the Muslim world do? I think this is the right time for the Muslim world to speak its voice on this issue and make itself heard clearly by the U.S. administration that Jerusalem is a red line and the Muslim Ummah will not allow the state of Jerusalem to be determined by a decision made by Donald Trump and a group of his aides. I believe that the position of Turkey regarding this issue is an advanced one that we as Palestinians highly respect and appreciate. The Turkish people, leadership and President Recep Tayyip Erdogan responded to the decision from day one and we have heard the president's clear and firm statements about it. In addition to his invitation to an urgent meeting in Istanbul, which is a great example of his positive response. We believe that our Muslim Ummah needs to come out of this meeting with clear decisions and statements. Let me turn your attention to a recent article in the New York Times which said that during President Mahmoud Abbas's trip to Saudi Arabia, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman presented a plan under which the Palestinians would get a state of their own, but only non-contiguous parts of the West Bank and only limited sovereignty over their own territory. It also goes on to say that the vast majority of Israeli settlement in the West Bank would remain. The Palestinians would not be given East Jerusalem as their capital and there would be no right of return for Palestinian refugees and their descendants. Will such a plan be acceptable to the Palestinian leadership and the Palestinian Authority? And this is a departure from the Saudi position, isn't it? We will not accept under any circumstances the establishment of a Palestinian state without having East Jerusalem with its known borders as its capital. We heard and read such reports, but we trust that the Saudis will not accept this. And we have not heard from them regarding accepting anything less than the whole of East Jerusalem as the capital of the Palestinian state. We do not think Saudi Arabia would accept this, nor would any country. We know that the Israelis are trying to break the trust between the Muslim nations, and certain sides of the American administration could also be involved in this to create a sense of doubt among Arab nations. Fatah and Hamas are trying to form, like look forward to elections soon, as they announced recently. Gaza was also discussed, the Rafah crossing, there's been agreement on that. Where does this unity government or this Hamas, Fatah, all this move together in light of what has happened 
with the Americans and Jerusalem. I believe that we are on the right track at the moment in order to achieve national unity and to get over all of the internal discord that we have lived with over the past years. There are some agreements that were signed recently. Things are moving in the right direction. The reconciliation government is in some ways conducting its operations in Gaza and the West Bank. There is a decision and consensus on conducting a presidential election and a parliamentary session. I believe that anyone who is following internal Palestinian developments will recognize that what is happening now is giving a strong push to all Palestinian groups and parties to unite and reject all of the American decisions. I believe that anyone who is following internal Palestinian developments will recognize that what is happening now is giving a strong push to all Palestinian groups and parties to unite in their rejection of the American decision and their agreement to strengthen that unity in order to face this and other American steps threatening Jerusalem. Final question. Is the dream of a Palestinian state over? Uh, we are not giving up because we have a relentless spirit. We have conviction and we have a plan. We are not saying that this is an easy thing or that the road will be easy. To create a state is a winding road with many challenges. It requires support and patience. We have patience. We have intent. We as Palestinians are steadfast in our rights and our principles. We have international legitimacy. So we will continue to resist and we will continue to try to establish our state. We know there are a number of regional and other issues that would make this very difficult, but that does not make it impossible. We do not submit to such a fate. The occupation is not our fate. Resisting the occupation is an obligation. And achieving our national goals is the aim. We will continue to work to achieve our national goals and the Palestinian state with its capital being East Jerusalem. Ambassador Mustafa, thank you so much. Thank you.